<laughs> ah, there we go. That's all right. Merry Christmas. Hey. Ah. All right. Merry Christmas. Hey, guys, looking for a tree? Need any trees? Uh, close to the season. Uh, hey, you got any Christmas trees left there? Oh, yeah. How's this? Wait, wait, no decorating, please. Right, I, I told them they could get ready for their program. Where have you been? Well, I had to get some decorations. Did you get my message? I did, but I want you to you take said, this job. Doesn't it say he has some psychological problems? It says he has some dementia. Wait, don't use the stapler. We have tape for that. Didn't you ask Nurse Petty? I did. No, you didn't. No, I didn't, but she's working in maternity. I wouldn't ask you to work in there. You might as well have. Well, I need someone I can trust. Then check him into a nursing home. He doesn't need to be checked in. He needs to be checked... On. I'm sure you can find someone else. I just want to make sure he takes his medication and takes a nap. You can send an orderly for that. I want to send you. <sighs> Your snowflake's crooked. Huh? Here, let me help you. Oh. Listen, I don't know if you read the part where they said they'd make a $5,000 donation. That's why you should talk to someone who has a car. I did. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. But I'll call a cab. I'm sure you can find someone with a car. Cab drivers have cars. Why waste the money? I just want you to slow down for a few days. I don't need a vacation. This is not a vacation. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But it's not a, a Christmas vacation. This is more of a, of a vacation from Christmas. I have never complained about working over the no, holidays. You're still working. You've just been going nonstop for so long, I don't want to see you take another thousand shifts. You're understaffed. The hospital needs the money. Then send an order. We got a letter that specifically asked for our best nurse. You'd have to replace me in the ICU. It's less than a week. I'll be right back to your crazy it's life. It's more work for you. Let me worry about that for once. I swear if you were fired, you'd come back and volunteer you, full you time. You see the mud you tracked in. Me too. What if I make you the best egg salad sandwich you've ever tasted? I don't eat egg salad. Well, you've never tried my egg salad. No, I haven't. What else can I do? You can find someone else. What if the taxi picks you up here and you still work in the mornings? Would it bring me back here when I'm done? No, it'll take you back to your place. You're not working nights. End of story. Would there be caroling? Oh, no. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> it's unlocked. Come right on in. Hi. You must be the nurse from the hospital. It's the shoes. Shoes will give you away every time. I'm here for Mr. Christian. Oh, please, no, mister. I'm just John. Okay, John. Most of my friends call me Uncle John. John. Or John. I like John. It'll do. <laughs> Mighty nice to meet you. Thanks for coming over the holiday. It's my job. Well, it's kind of you. What's your name? I'm Nurse Chamberlain. Nurse Chamberlain. My, what intuitive parents. <laughs> Got a brother named Fireman? No. Well, what should I call you? You can call me Nurse Chamberlain. Listen, I, I promise I won't forget your profession. I'd like to remember your name. My name is Constance. Constance, that's right. You got a middle name, don't you? Louise. Louise. I like that name, Louise. Knew a cat once. <laughs> Meanest cat in the whole world. Chased off a neighbor's pit bull one time. Scratched him in the nose. 
He's always making a mess getting into things. I named him Constantine. Wanted a thing like you, though. I didn't want to be my friend. Well, you just make yourself comfortable. Oh, I got it. I'm going to call you Connie Lou. My name is Constance. Oh, I bet you all your friends call you Connie Lou. Sounds like somebody I'd like to know. I am not a Connie John. You want to be Connie John? No, I said my Connie name is... Connie Lou is better. But I am not a Do Connie... Do you want me to make you some chocolate? I want you to call me Constance. Can we do that, please? Okay. Whenever we call you anything, that's what we'll do. We, all of us here will do that. Thank you. But I'm going to call you Connie Lou. John? I'm going to make some chocolate. I think we better fill out your chart first. You want a drink to quench your hot thirst? No. I need to know your medical history. Will you please sit here and answer a few questions for me? No need to shout, Connie. I'll tell you anything you're ready to hear. Thank you. Uh, I live to serve, Connie Lou. Constance. <laughs> How are you feeling today? Better since you came. How long have you been taking your medication? I don't know. You don't know? Well, how do you feel after you take it? it makes me sleepy. Nauseous? A little out of it? Dopey. Do you have any allergies? Sneezy, happy, okay. grumpy, bashful. This isn't funny, John. Well, you're the doc. That's an old joke. I'm an old man. How old are you? I stopped counting. What's your date of birth? Springtime. I have to fill out this chart. Well, I'm trying to help. When were you born? I think it was over 1900 years ago. Have you taken your medication today? No. I think it's time you did. I think it's time we decorate. Decorate. <laughs> I decorate. The Christmas season has officially begun. <laughs> Feel that? <laughs> this one always goes on the tree first. No, John, I don't really like to decorate. You know, that's funny you'd say that, because I really don't like to take my medication. <laughs> there, don't be shy. Where would you like me to place it? In the heart of the tree. All right. Here? The heart of the tree. The heart of the tree. You are a nurse, aren't you? <laughs> ah, that's better. Now we get to sing. You're going to sing now. I know. We're going to sing well, our carols together. I don't sing, John. Oh, sure you do. You just need permission. Permission granted. So what's your carol? I don't know too many carols. Oh, sure you do. What's your carol? My carol? You said your carol. Uh, you mean like, uh, joy to the world, or, oh come, oh come, ye people? Always like that one. But I want to hear you sing your carol. I don't have a carol. Oh, of course you do. Everyone has a carol. Carol that goes with this ornament was written by a very dear friend of mine. Guidon. Guidon Ben Mouché. Heard of him? Who? Yeah, you may have read about him in this little book called The New Testament. He was the innkeeper that turned Joseph and Mary away. The innkeeper? Oh, you know him. From Bethlehem. That's right. No, I don't. Well, he was a mighty nice fella. Just got a little too busy, though, like most of us do sometimes. But boy, he taught me a phrase I will never forget. Sing it with me, Connie. Translation, let him in. my name and thousands of years will fail to fully erase my shame 
But I turned a profit quite nicely that day that I turned a couple away. I turned them away. I didn't, I didn't sleep, sleep that evening Though I'd sold out my place Somehow I felt uneasy It was something about her face Why do I wish that I'd let them stay? I don't think that they could have paid Restless, I left my bedroom And I walked the streets all night Lost in the world I lived in And found by a heavenly light Staring at one bright star in the sky I heard a baby cry I knew where that cry had come from Cause I told them where they could go But I didn't think I could face them So I walked slowly home Missing my chance to share in their joy I never saw the boy But he never would condemn me Cause I did that all on my own He offers his forgiveness and ever since then I've known That he lets us choose Each hour of each day If we'll let him in to stay Let him in Let him in Let the hope and the joy begin Let him in I think I'm ready for my nap now. Oh, okay. Oh, it must be your cab. Would you like me to see out? No, I'll, I'll see myself out. Okay, that's fine. Just lay down. Will, will you be coming back tomorrow? I'll be here. Oh, that's fine. Thank you. Constance? Constance? Constance, your taxi's waiting. Uh, okay, okay, I just... Have you packed everything? I don't think I forgot anything. All right, hurry. Okay. Oh, okay. What? I, what? What is it? 
I, I don't want to go. Oh, Constance, this is not the time for this conversation. I know, I know. I just don't want to leave you alone. Do you know what I had to go through to get you accepted? It's a miracle they let you in. This is one of the finest schools in the country. I don't... Uh, uh, I don't have the energy for this right now. Is it worse than yesterday? Don't worry. Listen. Come here. Are you listening? Yes. I'll be fine. It's nothing I can't fix. I just need to rest. But you don't need to... I want you to focus on school. This is a huge opportunity for a girl your age. Just, just work hard. I will. All right. Hurry, go and catch your cab. Constance, don't make me ask you again. Okay. Excuse me. Oh. I told the dispatcher no honking. My patient is resting. I'm very sorry. She's gonna pay exact change. <laughs> but don't you worry, Dinah, I shall be a perfect gentleman. Hello there, where can I take you? 1456 Lincoln, please. Do you want me to take the East Street route or Beckstrand Avenue? I I'm sorry, what did you ask? East Street or Beckstrand. Oh, um, either is fine. Beckstrand, please. Beckstrand it is. <sighs> Looks like you got a lot on your mind. It's like I could take you home to Tooele. You wouldn't even know the difference. But don't you worry, Dinah would never let me get away with that. Is Dinah your dispatcher's name? No. Dinah's my cab's name. Your cab? Yeah. It's a pretty name. I remember the first day we met. Soon as I turned the key, she says, Hello. My name is Dinah. And I says, Very pleased to meet you. We have a pleasant conversation. Well, just so long as Dinah never really talks back. Only enough to keep me from going crazy. I hope you're not serious. Why is that? But it's a car. Well, that may be. But if something you care about is trying to tell you something important, you'd be crazy not to listen. Must be this part of town. What'd you say? Um, never mind. Hey, listen. Never trust no cabbie you don't talk to his cab. My father still tells me about this crazy old guy I used to work with. Says he told stories like you would not believe. But he names his cab Sarah. And Sarah was his old lady's name, but he really loved her. And let me tell you, that cab ran forever. Like my father's always saying, you give it a new name, you give it a new life. But you gotta name it with love, and you gotta tell her every day. I love you, Dinah. Love you. Love you. Whoa! Look at this mess. Let me out. Let me out at the corner, please. What, up here? Yes, <laughs> thank you. You're going to go help or there something? There might be something I can do. Here, let me get you some no, change. keep it. Do you want me to wait for you? No, I'll get a bus. I'm an ICU nurse at St. John's. Right. So where do you think you're going? To see if I can help. Not today, lady. The paramedics have it under control. There's a lot of glass and metal around, all right? It's very dangerous. I need you to stay right here. But there might be something that I Are can Are you going to test me? Because I wouldn't test me today. Need you to stay right here. You understand me? But they might need Do my... you understand me? Yes. Excuse me. Excuse me, miss. I don't have any change. No, I was just wondering if you wanted to come warm your hands by the fire. Oh, no, thank you. Merry Christmas, ma'am. Homeless, homeless, like the Christ child was. Homeless, homeless, but there is hope because He came down to earth to lead us He vowed He'd never leave us Homeless, homeless For in His love there is hope Still he changed the earth Nothing kept his heart from giving But most of his life was living and Homeless, oh, homeless. He, showed he showed it's how we live that way And he went to 
Listen to your teachers and you push yourself. Don't be lazy. I won't, I promise. All right, good night. Good night. Mother? Yes? My birthday is on a Saturday this year and I was thinking that maybe I could come home for the weekend if my grades are good enough. There won't be a home to come home to. What? I sold the house two weeks ago. I have to move out by the end of the month. But how are you going to I'll move? I'll send you a birthday gift. Oh, no, you don't have to. No. No, I will fix this. I'll, I'll fix it. You just can't come home right now. We have to wait until Christmas. Christmas? I'll give you a call later on this week, all right? All right. Study hard for me. I will. Good night, Constance. Good night. Mother. We are not homeless. We are not homeless like the Christ child was. There is a What's wrong? What's wrong? Not, what's, not, what's not, not what? so close to the other what? ornament, Connie Lou. It's a really big tree. <laughs> Happy? Grumpy. Squeak, squeak. <laughs> you know, I made this ornament myself. Made it after meeting Benjamin. Of course, everyone called him Yishnuni. Yeah, he was a great kid. He was one of the shepherds that was there that first Christmas. Oh, one of the shepherds that saw the angels. No, he didn't see any angels. No. No, he fell asleep and missed everything. <laughs> That's why we called him Yishnuni. For years later, he told me his whole story and I wanna share it with you, it was his carol. He said, the flock was more than peaceful, and the night was dark and deep, and the stillness wrapped around me, and I drifted off to sleep. And when my friends awoke me, ah, what a tale they had to tell. They said the angels told them about some newborn king. They said they had a star to guide them, and they heard heaven sing and they said that when they found him they knew they'd never be the same somehow I 
did believe them, though everything I knew said I should not believe them. This story can't be true, but there was something magic in the air, and it made me feel as if I had been there. I asked a thousand questions, and their answers startled me. The more I heard, the more I thought I knew. This could not be. Then the struggle started. My head was wrestling with my heart. Why would a God from heaven come to the world this way? Why in a lowly stable would a Messiah lay? I shook my head and asked them to please just tell the story one more time. And they did. And yes, I did believe them, though I'd not seen a thing. And I did not go to Bethlehem or hear the angels sing. But there was something magic in the air. And it made me feel as if I had been there. Now, I knew that as the world moves on through time, there'd be more stories just like mine about all the souls who've chosen to believe. It's something we never got to see. And do you think you'll join us? No, oh, you've not seen a thing. And you were not there in Bethlehem to hear the angels sing. But if you feel the spirit in the air, then just like me, you know, yes, you know, he was here. Yes, he was here. The King of kings and Lord of lords was here. He was here. He was here. Yes, he was here. And he will come again. Because he was here. He was here. Do you like egg salad? You know, I was looking at those. I don't mind if I do. Mm. Mm. You know, that's an interesting robe, John. Where did you get it? Oh. Who'd you say made the sandwiches? Dr. Halifax. Mm. Mm. That's a good sandwich. Mm. What are we talking about? Your robe. Where did you get your robe? Oh, it was his, actually. Belonged to my friend, Benjamin. And whenever I sing his ornament and hang his carol, I... <laughs> I wear his robe to honor him. So when did you first get to know your friend? Uh, 42 A.D. And what has become of him? He's dead, Connie. <laughs> right. But what about you? I'm not. <laughs> so you've been alive all these years. Don't you find that just a little unusual? A little? I think it's absolutely incredible. How many other men do you know who've been around as long as I have? In fact, how long have you known about these sandwiches? Oh, I don't eat egg salad. Oh, no egg salad. <laughs> <laughs> How is it that you have been alive so long? Can't tell you. You can't tell me. Because you don't want to tell me? Or because you don't know yourself? I don't think you're ready.
What are you running away from? I'm not running away from anything. You're running away from the question. No, I'm not. Then what made you stand up just now? I stood up just now, Connie Lou, because really old shepherd's clothes itch. <laughs> you make yourself comfortable. I'm going to change my robe. That's good. That's good. <clears throat> well, Connie Lou, I think there's just enough time to hang one more ornament on the tree before you have to go. Um, well, that looks more like an old pen than an ornament, John. What is it? It's more like an old pen than an ornament, Connie Lou. <laughs> it's time to hang it on a tree. Stop! Stop! No, what? No, what? no, 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 not so, no, no, so, not, not what? so close to the other ornaments, John. It's a really big tree. <laughs> Got a little goober in your nose there, Kylo. <laughs> Yeah, it's the bubble kind. <laughs> <laughs> now, I gotta tell you about this pen, Connie. So sorry to interrupt, John. You're right. You need to take your medication. Oh, first. it's all right. Yeah, you got me. That was good. That was really good. <laughs> this pen belonged to a friend of mine who had your same sense of humor. Genius. Oh, and he was such a great storyteller. I remember he was telling me this story one time. This was years ago. And uh, we got to talking about inspiration and where it comes from and why it comes and things like this. And he told me about a time in his life where he was completely uninspired, without direction whatsoever, lost. But then he said everything changed when he had a dream. In my dream, he told me, I was a very young angel in a very heavenly place when a trumpet was sounded and an announcement was made. <laughs> All angels in heaven are invited to audition for the choir that will announce the holy birth. Well, there was an excitement and a sense of anticipation that nearly caused my young angel heart practically to burst. <laughs> and I got ready. When my moment arrived, I was brought to stand before the musical tribunal. And I sang, and I sang, and I sang. <laughs> and no one snickered or laughed at me because this was heaven. But I realized almost immediately I wasn't gonna be invited to sing in that choir for one simple and obvious reason. I couldn't sing. I could feel it, but I couldn't get the feeling to come out of my voice. Well, the grand chorus master, he nods to his chief assistant to show me out. As they're showing me out, he gets to me. This isn't fair. If, if you could hear what's in my heart, you'd let me sing. And I begged him to give me another chance. And as I did, music started to fill that heavenly room and I recognized it because it was the music coming directly from my very own innocent, tender heart.
the other angels stood motionless and amazed at the sound. And when my carol to my king was over, the grand chorus master himself stood up. Oh, little one, he said, you have so much to give, and your time will come. Believe me, your time will come. Oh, then I can't sing with the choir. I wanted him to change his mind, but he just shook, shook his head. He said, you have a different voice, but it'll be heard. It'll be heard. Centuries from now, more orchestras and choirs than you can possibly imagine will be giving the music of your heart a voice that will echo through time. You mean to tell me this pen belonged to George, George Frederick Handel? This pen? Th that pen. Handel's pen. That pen. Four and two. What's the chocolate book? He wrote with that pen. This pen. <laughs> Wonderful <laughs> counselor and a whole bunch of stuff. That's really hard to sing. He wrote with that pen. <laughs> That's the pen he used to write his Messiah with. Oh, my. my pen. I don't believe it. You won't believe it. There's a big difference. It's just a story, John. Come on, you made up your mind a long time ago. Something like this couldn't possibly happen. So you've chosen not to believe it. No, I choose not to believe it because it isn't true. Well, just because you can't understand something doesn't mean it can't be true. It just isn't possible, John. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's yes, it not. Yes, it is. Do you talk to your kids this way? I'll never have children. I'm sorry. My, my taxi's here. Uh, I Connie, should go. I am so sorry. I should know better than to talk to my friends like this. I didn't mean to. You, don't leave this. Wait, 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 wait. Connie Lou, wait. Forgive me? Please? Oh, Sarah, what am I doing? I'm falling apart. You think I'm ever, ever going to learn? How can I help her? How can I get home if I'm just lost without you? That tree will give her the floor and pine needles. It's after five. What are you doing here? I need a favor. You want some more egg salad? No, I want to pick up a shift. Well, I thought we had an agreement about Please, that. Please, it's just for tonight. I need to work. I'm a nurse, not a babysitter. Constance? Please, just for tonight. Well, Cheryl said she'd be a few hours late tonight. Great. But I'll, I'll tell you right it. now, you're not going to like it. I'll take anything. It's in maternity. Oh. Listen, it's not a big deal. She'll be back in a few hours. No, and no, maybe I we said I'd cover. To... Okay. 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 Oh, you're not allowed in here. Please wait in the lobby. Are you Nurse Chamberlain? I am. Please leave now. My name is Sarah. You really can't be in here. Oh, oh don't don't do that. Put the baby down. Put the baby down. 
How did you do that? Oh, I've had a lot of experience. I used to run one of the greatest orphanages in all of Israel. This is not an orphan. Oh, I know that. I came here to help you. Me? Well, the orphanage closed about 1,900 years ago. 1,900 years ago? Give or take a few. Okay. Follow me into the lobby now. I took care of over 600 children in that orphanage, and I loved every minute of it right up until the day I died. The day you died? Hmm. It was a long time ago, but I love what I'm doing on the other side. The other side of what? Of the veil, Connie Lou. Sometimes it can be very thin. Oh, Dr. Halifax. I didn't know you could sing. Oh, I can't. It was Sarah. Who? Sarah. Who's Sarah? Well, the lady that was just here. Was there something you needed? Me? No. No, uh, Cheryl's here. She can take over now. I, I, I do have a taxi waiting for you, but I was thinking that, you know, maybe I we better could get, my things. get together and why don't you get your things? So was it as bad as you remember? <laughs> I don't belong in there. I'm terrible with babies. Oh, it looked to me like Dr. you'd be Halifax. great with Dr. Halifax, babies. have you seen yeah. my clipboard? I thought I left it right here. Yeah. Would you like to have dinner with me? I left it at me? John's house. Oh, well, you can pick that up tomorrow, can't no, you? No, no, I can't pick that up tomorrow. He might be reading my notes. What, what time is it? Uh, it's, it's just 8.30. It's not too late. Is the taxi still... 
out front. Yeah, yeah, the taxi should be there, but I, I was thinking that maybe I could drive and we could go get I some... Can, I'll see you tomorrow. Eat. See you. I'm sorry, I should have called. That's all right. Shouldn't have to call. Should have knocked. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just left my clipboard. Yeah, right there on, on the, the piano. piano. I'll get it. So how long were you standing there at the door? Not too long. Not too bad a dancer, am I? Were you dancing with someone? Just a memory. She was, she was my one true love. Did she die too? Yep. I'm sorry. Me too. You know, I've lived long enough to have seen the great beauties of this world. She was the greatest. She had these eyes. All oh, these eyes. Windows to a stunningly beautiful soul. And she loved me. She loved me. She saw things in me I couldn't even see in myself and brought them all out. I've never been better than I was when I was with her. Oh, I was something. She just quietly went about making everything work. I don't know how. She never told me. She just did it. She just did it. In all these years, the only time I ever really wanted to die it was when she did. But she made me promise I'd finish my mission no matter what. And so, since I believe we're going to be together again someday, I pretty, do pretty good the rest of the year. But when I remember how it was when she was here, hmm, it's hard. It's just hard. It's getting a little chilly in here? I think maybe that door was left ajar. John, um, may I have this dance? Listening to the sounds of the season on WRAP, celebrating 1900 years of continuous holiday music. So, did you get what you needed? I did. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Hey, when did they put that banner up? What? Peace on Earth? Yeah. We pass by that every day. Huh. I miss you, Mother. Did you finish all your homework? I, I just have a little math left. I double check your answers. Okay. <laughs> I, I could... I could run to the drugstore and pick up something for you if you want Are me. Are you speaking to me? We do not mumble in this house. You speak up if you have something to say. Sorry. What is that you're holding? Um, well, I just thought that I could, uh, I just. What is it, Constance? It's just a little Christmas music. I thought it might cheer you up. Can you play Joy to the World for me? I knew that was one of your favorites. What is that? What is that? What, what is what? Why are you changing it? I just thought I could... What, what, write, what did you think? I thought I could write something to go between the... Have you been writing music, Constance? No. Did you know your dad used to write songs? He did. All the time. Didn't I tell you that? I'm sure I told you that. No, I don't think so. Oh. Well, I mean, they weren't all winners, but some of those songs were... They were... They were really something. And he never had any real training either, but he was so smart, Constance. He would question everything. You wouldn't believe some of his questions. And then he, he'd find some answer that made sense to him and he'd, he'd share it with me. And, oh, well, he had this one song and I thought it was, it was so different. How did it go? Da -da. Oh, I hate this. I can't remember. So, what? You're taking after your dad now. Am I? Are you writing music or aren't you? N no, sort of. I don't know how to... I can't write... believe I... Are you writing anything down? And I mean on paper. Well, I don't know how to write the notes, but sometimes I can't sleep and I think of these melodies at night and... Your father I, never wrote anything down either. He didn't? Don't you dare do what he did to me, Constance. Don't you dare. I won't. He didn't leave me anything. I'm sorry. And I've forgotten all of them. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Can I get something for Oh, I don't need anything from you. I just need that nurse. Can I call her? Where is she? Mother? Where is she? I don't know. Where is she? I Hello? Hello, Nurse Fleming. Oh, thank you. Where are you? No, I can't wait. Yes, yes, of course, I can wait a few minutes. I'll be here. Thank you. Thanks for calling. I'll see you in a minute. Oh, Constance, I don't know where I'd be without that nurse. She is saving my life. You're not crying, are you? I, I don't want to see you cry. I just need some medicine, and that'll fix it. She'll be here real soon. She'll be here. She'll be here. Constance. Uncle Ted, it's Wednesday. We don't get out for the break till Friday, 12.30. Constance, your mother passed away last night. Oh. When? I, I mean, what time? About a quarter past ten. Constance, the funeral arrangements have been made. Was she in any pain when she died? We're going to have to make a few decisions. Was she taking something to help her? Was there enough? About a couple tickets for us to leave tomorrow night. Is everything ready for the funeral and everything? We're on the eight o'clock train. Is there anyone I should call? They may ask you to say a few words. Is there anything I should do? Just say a few words. 
When my mother named me Constance, she had no intention of ever calling me Connie. She used to tell me that Constance was a name of substance and dignity and Connie was just fluff. I hope that I can always live my life the way she wanted me to. She wouldn't want me to cry today, so I won't. I won't do that. I can't. I can't do this anymore, Dr. Halifax. I'm not going back. I don't understand. Didn't you get my messages? Of course I did. So why haven't you tried to find someone else? I have. No, you haven't. No, I haven't. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't understand what you meant by inappropriate. He's certifiable, Berkeley. He needs a psychiatrist. Did, I'm just you, a nurse. Did, did you just call me Berkeley? Well, that is your name, isn't it? Well, yes, but you've never called me by my first name. Well, you're the hospital's administrator, and I just oh, always thought I, that I, I just always I like thought it. that. <laughs> Dr. Halifax, I really shouldn't be there anymore. Well, do you want to tell me what happened? Uh... Well, he thinks he's been alive since the time of Jesus, and every day he sings to me a song from someone he met 2,000 years ago. So this is way before the Beatles. <laughs> I'm serious. Did he try to take advantage of you in some way, or...? No, no. Okay. But he is writing these little notes. Well, that's very little. <laughs> My dearest... Connie Lou. Hey. Don't ask. Don't ask. Just read. Just read. <laughs> I'm afraid you're stuck with me. And I hope you can learn to like me someday because you can't make me not like you. Love, Uncle John. Yeah. That seems pretty harmless, right? What if I told you he wrote it with the same pen George Frederick Handel used to write his Messiah? Well, I'd say it did write something nice, didn't it? Are you serious? I'm always serious. Is there something going on between you two? <laughs> no. no. You're, you're laughing. <laughs> you're being absurd. Well, you're hiding something. No, no. I think you're developing <laughs> special feelings for this patient. No, I'm not. Well, well, just, what made you stand up just now? I stood up just now because Why? the taxi's waiting. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> Constance, wait, hey. I like your laugh. I'm leaving now. Oh. Hi, Connie Lou. What's wrong? I want to thank you for your kindness last night. Boy, I've really known some compassionate nursing. 
in my life. Did I ever tell you about the time that I actually was on the field with Florence Nightingale? <laughs> Perhaps some other time. But I was so touched by what you did for me last night, I did something I haven't done in a really long time. I made a new ornament, and I dedicate it to you. What's the song that goes with it, John? That one, that one's being written by you. I don't write songs. It's your carol. And when you're ready to hear it, you'll see it's as beautiful as you are. Why do you do this? Do what? Make up these stories about people singing songs in their hearts and then and, and, and meeting Handel and talking to the innkeeper. It's not true. You know what's wrong with people who've only lived a few decades? <laughs> you think you already knew all there is to know about everything you've ever already learned. What does that even mean? I mean, there's more. There's always something more. New way of seeing things. But that's an easy thing to forget when you keep seeing everything the same old way. Now, I know how hard this has been for you. My stories about the innkeeper and the shepherd. What if I told you I met a soldier once? Met him at a field hospital I was visiting during the war. Which war? World War II. Okay. Right. Well, I wish you could have been there. You'd have helped him a lot more than I did. You see, he had gotten some shrapnel in his leg, but it wasn't enough to send him home. And he just found out his daughter had been born. Well, we got to talking, and he told me he liked to write songs. Not professionally, but just when he couldn't sleep at night sometimes. And I heard those songs, and you know, Connie Lou, I got to tell you, they were really... They were really something. And so I said, maybe you should write a song about how you're feeling, about being a new dad and all. And you know what he said? He said he was scared. <laughs> I told him, I'll bet you're not the first father to ever feel that way. Well, you can imagine. I'd prepare a little Christmas program for the next night, and then you're... Well, then these... And comes to me and he says, hey, John, I wrote a song. What do you think? And he played it for me. And I said, Jim, you have got to play that song at the Christmas program tonight. You want to hear what he wrote? Okay. I think you need to hear this. He was working late one evening With the wood he knew so well When I thought I recognized him Though at first I couldn't tell As I humbly begged his pardon A strange sadness swelled inside when I asked, aren't you the father of that man they crucified? And then the carpenter repeated what he'd said so many times. He said, I was not his father. He was mine. Then he humbly went on working with his worn and calloused hands. Though I did not ask more questions, he knew I didn't understand. So he asked if I would help him. He saw my answer in a glance. And I did all the chores he asked me. And I was grateful for the chance. <clears throat> and then we talked for hours of Jesus and how he knew he 
was divine. He said I was not his father. The Son of God. And then he spoke of the misgivings that he had had a thousand times. And how Jesus found the tender moments to let him know he had done just fine. And testified they came from Jesus. And then my heart within me burned. And we embraced as he departed. And Joseph told me one more time Tell them I was not his father. a nice song, John. They're all nice songs. You think I'm telling you the truth? It doesn't matter what I think. I just came to give you your medicine and help you take your nap. I'm, I'm sorry. What do you have to be sorry about? Well, you're not hurting anyone. I, I just don't understand. I wish I did. That's enough. What? That's a great Christmas wish. Well, that's not what I meant, but okay. Of course it's not what you meant with your head. But that's the thing about hearts. I don't care so much if it makes sense. Christmas is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. This story would have us believe that there were angels singing in the heavens. And there was this star, this magic star that guided wise men to a stable where a baby, born of a virgin, mind you, would grow up and save the world. Now, come on. Who could possibly believe any of this? If there wasn't something in our hearts that said, yes, it's true. Somewhere beneath the glitter that comes this time of winter, in many souls there is a cry. They may not clearly say it, but in their hearts they pray it. You can see it in their eyes and they're singing I cannot find my way I cannot find my way I cannot find my way and their numbers are growing and they're saying there are so many voices so many different choices I cannot find my way Followed the star of Bethlehem. They came from afar to praise and honor him, the light which beckoned them to see. The Lord of men, it calls to you, it calls to me.
we're not alone Cause we have a star And it shines today The love that he gave Teaches how And shows the way That light is clear to see If we have faith and believe Three kings found the Lord And so shine eternally Cause three kings they found the Lord and so can we Three kings found the Lord and so Miss Chamberlain? No. no. Have you been harmed in any way? No, I'm fine. Did somebody break into the house? Yeah, this guy right here. Breaking and entering. Oh, no. His family is away on vacation. He's just been staying here. The family here. who lives here is away on vacation, but I guarantee you they do not have anyone staying here. But, but they, they sent a letter to the hospital saying that they would give the, the hospital... The neighborhood watch called the Rutherfords in Paris. The Rutherfords called us. Oh. When? I mean, what time? Uh, about a quarter past two. I don't believe this. This guy's homeless. He likes to sneak into people's houses to meet new friends. What's happening, John? We knew right away who it was. Are they telling the truth? Did the same thing to a nurse in Grantsville a few years back. What are they saying, John? Sure likes nurses. <laughs> Must have a thing for him. Was it all a lie? Ask him about Nurse Runyon. See if he remembers her. Even the story of your great love, was that a lie too? Wonder what she'd say if she knew he was singing his songs to you. You get some sort of sick pleasure playing with people like this? Some sick joke? You forced a letter to the hospital, didn't you? I know what you must be thinking, but I can explain this. You're a liar. Nothing you say is real. I can clear this up. You're worse than she was. I can fix it. Stop it. Just I can stop fix it. it. I Don't. Touch me, mother! You can't fix this! <laughs> Let it all out, Connie Lou. Let it all out. Maybe now you can find your Carol. Keep the ornaments. They're yours. What? 
You, uh, yeah, right there? <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah. Thank Why don't you gather his things? I'm gonna go check the grounds and we'll leave for the station in a few minutes. Okay, um, thank you. <clears throat> Pay to the order of St. John's Hospital, $5,000. Well, I hope it doesn't bounce. Hmm. Grantsville Chronicle, December 14th, 1970. Deck the halls with boughs of folly. Santa isn't the only one who sneaks into houses to leave holiday surprises. Nurse Runyon, Thanks, old man, for sharing forgotten carols with her. So you do have a thing for nurses. Farmtown Flyer, December 16th, 1964. Butcher claims con man taught him forgotten carols. Oh, my mistake. It's not always nurses. December 10th, 1951. Wow, been doing this a while. New York family claims they had their own miracle on 34th Street. Aging gentleman calls himself Uncle John. Teaches forgotten carols. <laughs> Holiday Hope downtown. Many say elderly out of towner. Gives hope to the homeless. Stars and Stripes, January 5th, 1943. Field hospital not forgotten. There was an eccentric entertainer visiting a remote field hospital Christmas Eve, sharing peaceful music and stories. You never expect to meet a man like John in a place like this, says Sergeant James Preston Chamberlain. James Preston Chamberlain? That was my... You knew my father?
Excuse me. I'm here for John Christian. Oh, you mean the choir director? Do you hear that? They have not stopped singing since he left. Where did they take him? I don't know. Somebody bailed him out. Who could have bailed him out? Hey, Jared, who bailed out the old guy? Uh, it was some woman. It was some woman. I think her name was... I think her name uh, was... Cindy. Cindy? No, no, something. no. Sarah. Sarah. Yeah, that's it's it. It's got to be with Sarah. Couldn't be Sarah. Why's that? Well, she's been dead over 1,900 years. <laughs> hey, Jerry, we got anybody in the padded cell tonight? <laughs> Look, did they say where they were going? I just need to know where I should leave his things. Sorry, nurse. All he left was some note for some woman named uh, Connie Lou. Oh, that's me. Sort of. <laughs> My dearest Connie Lou, you'll never know how much knowing you has enriched my life. It was so great finally meeting you. I'll never forget you because you reminded me what it is to be beloved. When you hang your new ornaments on your tree, know that I too am dreaming of Christmases when we'll be together again. He heard it. He heard my carol. What's that? <laughs> he heard my... Um, never mind. Thank you for saving this note. Um, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, man. No, don't, don't volunteer. You don't need to do that. Okay, you go home, you get something to eat, you drink some eggnog, and you get some sleep, and then you drink some more eggnog, and you go back to sleep. But this is where I want to be. But it's Christmas Day. Okay, I have to be here. Everyone here has known they'd have to be here today, and we've all been dreading it since April. So give someone the day off. Give two people the day off. I'll take a double shift. Where? In maternity. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl and Kristen are working there today. Great. Great, I'll go let them know. I can't wait to see their faces. And what about you? Well, what about me? They need to be with their families, don't y they? Yes, but what about you? Me? Yes. Um, well, um, you'll be here, won't you? Yeah. And you still have some egg salad in the fridge? Yes, I do. Well, all right then. All right, then. Merry Christmas, Berkeley. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry. Happy New Year. I 
have someone who wants to see oh. you. <laughs> oh, look oh. at her. Well, hi. <laughs> oh, she's beautiful. Have you picked out a name yet? Oh, no, nothing yet. I was, I was hoping something about her would let me know when I saw her, but uh, no, nothing yet. Well, I'll give it time. Yeah. You let me know if you need anything, okay? All right, thank you. Um, nurse, mm. I can barely keep my eyes open. Is that normal? <laughs> yes, it is. You just had a baby. Here, let me take her and you get some rest. Oh, goodness. Thank you. You're welcome, Megan. What's your name? I can't believe I don't even know your name. My name is Constance. Constance? Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful name. Thanks. I like it. But my friends, well, well all my friends call me Connie Lou. Get some rest. Given what I need. A mansion on a hill, or love like in the movies. Perfect little lives where no one has a problem. Instead of all those things I thought I really wanted, I've been given what I need. Even when I didn't Everything I hoped and all the things I prayed for Couldn't hold a candle to what I've been given I've been given what I
show like this for 15 years and you tell people that everybody has a carol in their heart, everybody has a carol in their heart, people can't help but ask you, so Mike, what's yours? What's, what's your forgotten carol? And I've had a lot of years to think about it. And so tonight, before we go home, I'd like to share with you the, uh, the forgotten carol that means the most to me. And I'd like to have it sung tonight by my son, who I call the voice I never had. Uh, it's Jeff McLean. He did not come in glory when he first came to earth. Most of the world ignored his humble birth. But the heavens were singing in celestial harmonies and a star guided some souls to their knees those with ears to hear and eyes to see and the miracles followed but the skeptics believed they were lies spread by those who'd been deceived with an appetite for power They mocked every word he said While the ones truly hungering he fed Those who hungered after righteousness he fed And the light that he gave was to live I give thanks for his sweetness I have faith in his power And I know he'll strive with me every hour For he suffered in darkness Kneeling in Gethsemane So the light of his love could shine on me So the light of his love could shine through me. Oh, That the 
Thank you. Merry Christmas. Well, it's hard to say goodbye and let go. And it's hard to see this evening end. Because this memory we just made may never happen again. I should push rewind and play it again. But it's harder for time to ever erase This together time we just shared So when we're all apart, let's remember The spirit we felt here together And for all this love, thank the Lord above Who showed us the way That we can be Together forever someday We can be together forever someday We can be together forever someday This is a tradition with the carols. If you wouldn't mind joining me in singing, we can be together forever someday. Don't let the words throw you. We can be together forever someday we can be together forever someday we can be together forever someday i was kind of hoping you'd sing out loud i think you'll do better if you link up could you link up with the people on either you don't have to make out it's just linking up and if this is an awkward invasion of your personal space, touching shoes counts. All right, very good. You're linked? Okay, with a little bit more enthusiasm, let's hear it. We can be together forever someday. in linking you sounded so much better now I'd like you to picture somebody who just couldn't make it tonight I mean you've been thinking about them and maybe um, well maybe they're far away maybe they're in Afghanistan or Iraq or maybe they're away at school or they're serving their their church or maybe they're with Sarah doing something important on the other side pick somebody that you love who couldn't be with us tonight and let's sing to them. Now, this is just me, but I choose to believe when we sing to people we love, wherever they are, they hear something. Oh. So, for somebody you love who couldn't be here, we believe. We can be together forever someday. You know, if you felt something tonight, all of us want you to know, we know, it wasn't the story. It wasn't the songs, it wasn't the performance. It was the magic in the air. And I believe it comes this time of year to remind us that though there may have been some carols that got forgotten, the one whose birth we celebrate has promised he will never 
forget us. So, to carry this feeling home, let's not clap anymore. You've already made us all feel like big shots, and we love that, thanks, but this evening was never meant to be about us. So picture him however you picture him, whether it's the babe in Bethlehem or the king of kings or however. And as we sing, let's hum together the one carol that could never be forgotten. John, and there's some Constance out there that needs you to help her find her Connie Lou. Maybe you have a feeling who it is. You can find her. The point is, is that this Christmas, wherever you are on the journey, you have a chance to make this the greatest holiday you've ever known. You've done that for me. 